Hey, it's Sunday. You know what time it is? It's baby licking time with Joe Biden. <laughs> God damn it. It's time to talk about coloring. It's time to talk about coloring. <laughs> there's, another, there's another joke in there I'm going to avoid. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. With me today, we got, uh, we got four with us now and a couple more who said they're going to be running a little bit late. Um, but yeah, let's introduce the panel. We've got Captain Fuckhead. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> How you doing this week? I'm all right. Angry yeah. at me dog. Mm. He's a moron. <laughs> Throwing shit in the river and expect me to go and get it. You can fuck off. Mm. What are you going to do, man? You know, um, dogs. He's going to have to save up his pocket money to buy a new wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you working on anything interesting this week? Oh, you want to see it, do you? I mean, we can see it later, or you can show it now. I just cool. Well, I might as well show it. I've still got it on the screen. Yeah, let's uh, see it. Yeah, yeah, just a bit of uh, fan art. Oh, it's fl flickering. For fuck's sake. It's flickering. I love when it does that. Yeah. I love when it does that. <laughs> it's not animated, I promise. Mm. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. Bit of fan art for uh, ah. Mr. Russ Leach, Mr. Comic Book Black Belt. Nice, nice. It's coming on. So kind of squirt some colors on there. It looks like. Well, I've got uh, yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got the basic flats put in. I've got to go and do everything else. I figured Very out cool. from uh, from our chat before. Uh, I've got a little folder here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with all the things fitted in. So, and I figured out. Uh, remember, we were saying um, during our little session. I was like, I've got no idea how to um, invert the mask. Uh, control I, click on the mask. Control I. I found a, I found a much better way to do it for the uh, the top layer. Um, so obviously this is a skin folder. Uh, I just select all the skin and then create the mask, and it does it all for me. You're you're adopting my techniques. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Nice. We're getting nice. there. Nice. Nice. But yeah, I've, yeah. So just select if you're in clip, just select the area you want to color, and then make the mask, and it just does all the inversion shit for you. You don't have to worry about it. There you go. That's helpful. Very nice. Very nice. Excellent. So let's see what we got here. We got Michael Beacon. Hey, hey. brother. I'm good. Just yeah. Yeah. Another still week. shipping out them seven legions. Yep. Still shipping them out as soon as they're ordered. Uh, you know. Working on some uh, Matverse. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Very cool. Anything to show? Anything you want to show? Uh, not show? quite yet. Uh, still, still in the process of flats. But okay. Nothing quite, yeah. nothing quite ready on this computer. Right on. Right on. Okay. Look forward to that. I can't wait to see some of your stuff on Simon. That'd be great. And last, uh, but definitely not least, for now at least, we have Lucius. Hey, Lucius. Hey, what's up? How's How it going, man? Uh, I'm doing all right, man. I could actually show for this one. I'm I'm happy to be part of the group discussion. Sweet, yeah. sweet. Well, uh, what are you working on this week? Anything cool? Uh, I am working on more versions uh, for the Graveyard Shift fan art contest. I don't know if you saw this one here. Yeah. Uh, sure. This was the one that I probably spent the most time on, only to find out he doesn't want it in color. <laughs> so uh, I have to like go back and like kind of make it up because some of the colors blocking like line art underneath, um, and some of it's just colored line art too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to kind of redo it. But um, this was going to be my my entry into it, and uh, so I'm, I just kind of did some other roughs and uh, considering doing it. Like just showing them and having people see which one's their favorite, uh, but this was the one that was uh, kind of in the back pocket for a while there. So what you're saying is your your um, your your colors are already flattened in your line art. Oh no, these are all still separate layers, so it's not hard for me oh. to do it. It's just that uh, like some of the 
flats are above like why not like the, so the moon is like its own yeah. layer and yeah, yeah. uh then i have the figures as their own layer and some of that's even separated out so i just kind of have to uh get rid of some of those colors look at it again and kind of redefine some values too without the colors being a part of it so gotcha gotcha yep well very cool very cool well you look looking forward to that well um today uh, let's well, before we go. Let's address the chat. We got Mogwai in here. Mogwai's throwing out all the comments. Welcome, Mogwai. And it looks like we got uh, Delta Spurg Force over here in the spirit of the Jazz Crab, uh, mm -hmm. looking for some cultural appropriation and uh, a little bit of uh, reparations and uh, you know, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> Carla, White Cat Comics in the chat. Morning, everyone. I'll be there shortly. Okay, okay, okay. We'll have Carla Tornielli on today. We I kind of uh, guilted her into saying she would come on. <laughs> so Vinny's running late. It's his birthday. Uh, Simon could be sleeping. Don't know. Don't know. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Edwin the Ace is in the chat. What's up, Edwin? Edwin's got a project that's being put together right now. A little book he's putting out. It's very cool. Well, okay. So uh, we'll just move right along into the topic. The topic for today is light sources. Now, I get asked a lot by you know people in passing or you know chat at send me a DM, ask some questions or whatnot, or just in count conversation. How do you find your light source whenever you go to render a page? Like you get a piece of line art, you're looking at it. What indicates where the light's coming from? What do you do? What is your? How do you determine that? And so, through a series of you know, investigation, when you look at the line art, you can, you can decipher where the light's coming from by scene composition and, and rendering. So, um, you know, what, what do you think about that cap? How do you find the light sources when you go to render? You know what, when I wake up in the middle of the night needing to pee, it's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in terms of coloring, not painting the bowl. <laughs> It uh, it depends on it depends on what I'm doing because uh, sometimes if I'm if I'm doing my own work I've got no fucking idea and I just make it up. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm doing stuff for other people, I, I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, the artist very kindly leave me some clues in the work. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at uh, specifically under the under the chin is the first place I go. Uh, where's mm -hmm. the person looking? Uh, where's the shadow going? figure it out from there and then i look then once i found that i just look for any other anything other information that gives me corresponding okay you know that backs that information up i don't know what i'm saying yeah 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 for sure um michael beacon when you look at a piece of line art where do you find your light sources from hey yeah just uh looking at like uh where the uh like thicker black lines are where the uh, hatching is, um, and of course, if there's like a point where like a light, like actual light drawn in or anything like that, or um, yeah, it's stuff like that. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> so just study the page and look yeah. to see what's on it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, extremely um, methodical. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit of a fog. So yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, Lucius, what about you? Uh, you, your, your fan arts uh, tend to have a lot of light sources that are very direct, that are very direct and very colorful. Mm -hmm. A lot of cast lights, a lot of reflected light. Um, what do you, what do you do for your light sources? Well, I guess for me it's a little different because I'm basically starting from the ground up. So it's not like I have to deliberate on somebody else's thing. Uh, but if I was looking at somebody else's work, I mean, sometimes you'll have something that seems pretty obvious. Like if you had a Rob Willis piece in front of you, um, like it's pretty much he, he does all the shading for you on, in a way. Like I, I that would be one I'd have trouble actually coloring because it's kind of like he's done so much for you already. You don't want to overdo it. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's just in the hatching, cross hatching. Uh, typically speaking, if, if you have somebody who knows what they're doing, the line weights and the inks will kind of tend to lean one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, it's really kind of um, looking at the scene itself. You know, what would be obvious light sources for the setting 
where it's at, um, and at the same time making your own judgment on just how how far you're going to take that. So, like, if you had a son behind somebody, more than likely in real life, you probably wouldn't even see any detail of them because it's just so blinding. So you're kind of pulling that back or, or adjusting what that is. Um, you might have something as far as what comic work you'll see the sequentials before or after maybe help you determine what you're looking at in that panel um mm -hmm. and other times it's just like what's the mood you want to give it um so hopefully you, you have some indication but you're able to also throw your own spin on it so it's not just all by numbers kind of thing but uh, for me yeah it's really just trying to uh determine where i think a good light source would be what what do i want to show on the page like and uh mm -hmm. then just i when i do it i kind of sculpt with color i don't know if that makes sense to you but just like layer by layer yeah. Yeah. um you know figuring out the 3d volume of it uh i, I really have a great respect for colorists especially now when you have like some really open line work uh line work from artists that they're pretty much defining the volume and the uh the shadow and a lot of things uh, from what they do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, those are those are all great points. Um, I think in in uh, in terms of the way I do it too, uh, pretty much a lot of what what you guys have already said. Um, before I start rendering, I, I take a good look at the line art and I look at like what's in the scene. Right? Is there a television? If there's a TV. Mm -hmm. TVs emit light. Are there lights above? Is there a lamp? Is it nighttime? Is it daytime? Is the is the sun shining through the window? You know what I mean? If this is indoors, right? If it's outdoors, day and night, and you have to determine the position of the sun. And that a lot of times is is predicated on the on the line art. Right? You'll see where the black shapes are on the characters. Uh, using a knowledge of of the forms that you're looking at, whether it's a an arm which is a cylindrical form, the light is up above. You will have pullouts that are rounding the top in the direction of the light. The light's coming from here. You'll have you'll have pullouts rounding the the form, right? And uh, you know, in line art, there's only there's only a few ways to express light and shadow. If you're not using gray washes and screen tones, it's all line work. So you know things things to keep in mind things to keep in mind are let me share this real quick so so if i um if i get a brush here just to kind of kind of explain this further so ink spots last week talked about a circle right he talked about a light source like this, if the light is hitting here, you're going to have this entire part of it illuminated in some fashion. And then wherever the light can't hit in shadow. Well, the way we express that <clears throat> in line work in inking would be a thick base and then a pullout, a thick base and a pullout. This right here, you can think of that as gray, right? This means a value of gray. And then you would have crosses, cross hatches that intensify the gray. So if you're talking about shade, this is what you're, what you're seeing. I need to get like, make some gray here. So if we go on a like 50%, 20%. Ten percent. So that's what this type of thing means. So when you look at the line art, look for cross hatches, look for hatches, look for thick to thins, and that's what the inker is saying. This right here, by that. So, the, I was talking earlier, the frequency of the lines, how close they are together, is how dark it is. The thick to thin, right. That's how gray it becomes and how close they are together. Or as the form changes, you'll see, you'll see the ink lines adjust to the form and maybe different types of rendering to indicate 
different intensities of light. The other thing to consider too, and as Mike, Michael Beacon said, if you look at a form, let's just say a rectangle, poorly drawn rectangle, usually if the light's coming from back here, this, ba this back edge, even though it's not underneath, is going to be thicker. This edge would be thicker just because it's underneath. But these interior lines here would be eraser hello would be thinner because they're interior lines but we look at we look at thick to thin thick to thin as they get as they're in the foreground to the background this tells us light right so we're looking at line weights another thing you'll see too is you'll see a form with a dot some of that's stylistic but also, whenever you have breaks in lines, that is indicating an intense light source hitting that spot. Usually you'll have a thicker line on the underside. So undersides of shapes where there's less light, more shadow, more shadow is going to be where there's less light, right? So look for, look for your you know, your figure, your forearm, right? Right. If you have a thin, thin line here, and then a more thick line there, more rendering, you're, you're getting more, you can see that there's more light there. So look at, look at your figures, look at your shapes, look at your forms, look at the various pullouts from like a black shape, black shape, this type of thing coming out of a black shape. This is shadow. This is gray. You know what I mean? You'll, sometimes you'll have dots that come off or broken lines. That's indicating, that's indicating light. That's indicating gray. Welcome to the stream. Yo. That's Vado, ex hey. expert painter. Expert? Well, expert's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about different rendering and trying to find light sources, how to read the inks and uh, figure out you know where our light sources come from so yeah light light was something like um that that drove me crazy for the longest time because what i do is when i start working on something like when i was learning how to do all of this stuff i was um i would obsess over different things like when i was studying anatomy i obsessed over anatomy so i would draw every muscle and then you neglect the ne like you're supposed to put skin on your figures though. <laughs> so you don't actually right. see the striations of every muscle in the human body come through, you know? And, right. um, but every time I set out to learn something like that, it was kind of like, it was in steps. Like at first, you know, you get excited about it. You're obsessed about it. It drives you crazy. Then you relax on it and then you get it. You see what I'm saying? Like, those are the steps. Well, that's that's the phases that I went through when I was studying all of this. And the same thing happened when I was studying light and shading. Um, you know, same thing. Get excited about it. <laughs> you know, um, phase two, you know, obsess about it. Phase three, it drives you nuts. And then the last one is when you decide, fuck it, I give up. I'm just going to go with what feels right. And that's when you get it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, right. When you're, uh, when I was wanted, like, there's a bunch of techniques you can use, but one of them, like, if I'm lazy about light sources, I will just, I, I'll just use Google and find like, uh, something that's lighted well and mm. try to figure out where the light source is coming from and incorporating in that into what I'm doing, you know, on a paint. But if I want to do it the right way, <laughs> I'll eat, I'll use like a figure with a flashlight and um ah and figure out the light source that way. Mm -hmm. You know. Like uh action figures of work wonders for comic art. <laughs> you know? Well, interesting you bring that up. Um there's a tool that I've found on ArtStation. Someone made William Wynn made this. I think I've and, seen that. Yeah, and this is basically it's a movie that plays. You can pause it or move it wherever you want. Yeah. And 
rotate the head in 3D space, um, you can uh, you can change the way that the the light works. Uh, let's see, zoom in, zoom out, full screen. There you go. You can change the rendering style. Yeah. I mean, so you can get the actual forms. It's a great tool. It's a great tool. Um, you know, this is just clay with no no direct light sources. But um, I I really I things like this things like this understanding the planes of the face understanding where light comes from and how to express that. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of tools out there. But I get asked, I get asked sometimes, like, just just basically, when I look at a page, how do I find out where the light comes from? You, you see, know? that's the trick right there, because the artist isn't always right when he when he the penciler and the inkers aren't always correct when they uh, when they do a page. Like I did a page recently, and it was in it was in my own book where it's just just big scene and it's chaotic, and there's mm -hmm. guns firing off. And my light source was completely wrong because I never incorporated the guns going off as another light source. You see what I'm saying? Like the flashes mm -hmm. of the of the barrels. And my my colorist fixed it, but somewhat, you know, he, he tried to fix the problem. But to be honest, I never even recognized there was a problem until he tried to fix it. And then I was like, holy shit, you know, I, I should have, you know incorporated that into the ink and when i or pencil and when i was doing my pencils but yeah yeah you know, I, I used to i yeah i just missed it like because light is complicated you know it's very it is very complicated, complicated. it's yeah. very complicated and and the thing to understand too is just because thing something emits light doesn't necessarily mean it'll show up as a light source take a flashlight outside in the middle of the day and turn it on and tell me if you see it on the ground you won't to be drowned yeah, well, that, by that was the most confusing thing when I was studying uh like light and shadings because you don't like you can't apply the rules um hey what's up Carla? hello everyone <laughs> morning colorists <laughs> the rules with light and shade and break themselves you know what I'm saying like it's not like there's also ambient light you know what I'm saying like light right. sources that you can incorporate like off panel and stuff like that you know and then like one artist he was completely insane where he did a diagram where he had like silverware on the table. He was like, well, the light source will bounce off the silverware and it'll hit the, you know, I was like, fuck that, dude. <laughs> and arrows going all over the place. You know? Well, at some uh, point too, and, and we're, t I'm talking generally, but with comic art, with comic art, a colorist can take beautiful work and make it absolutely unfucking understandable by the viewer. Yeah. If the yeah. light sources don't make sense, if there's too much color information on every single object, certain things in the background will de-emphasize the foreground character. Or if the if the main character is in the background, you you can you can make them uh, you can, you can make them indiscernible by making it too colorful and busy in the foreground. So yeah. we need stories with color as much as the penciler and inkers do. Well, I, I tried to pull my, push my colorist on uh, Doc Salem to desaturate the backgrounds, mm. you know, like by seven, by twenty five, thirty percent, you know, um, so that it's not they're not competing with the foreground, you know. That way, the foreground. Who is your colorist slightly, on Doc Salem? It's um, Brian. I can't pronounce his last name. Like, <laughs> I'm this, blah blah blah. Or something. Fair it enough. starts with an M. That's just okay. called Brian M. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like because he was he was using bright you know colors which he should have been but i just i felt that you know like it was everything was competing with each other what what it, it was it was the page was trying to compete with itself and mm -hmm. um when you eliminate a little of that by desaturating the background you it, it makes for a better page you know you start having contrast between your foreground and your background yeah yeah, yeah. well see I, I look at a book like like seven legions right yeah a lot of space scenes right a lot mm -hmm. of uh, a lot of reflected light when so beacon when you when you colored seven legions yeah. what was your like what was your main goal storytelling with light where where you, where did you find your light sources were they were they all direct sources were they cosmic were they emitted from objects in people's hands what what was your thought process 
Um, yeah, it just depends on the scene, really, like, or, like, uh, where to add the drama to it. Like, there's the scene where the, uh, mm-hmm. where the, uh, dwarf on the jetpack, you know, smashes the orc in the face with the axe. Uh, you know, most mm-hmm. of the light was on that was, uh, from the axe itself, because, you know, And that was the rocket-powered axe, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I just hear dwarf awesome. on a jetpack? Yep. Sold! Back seven <laughs> legions. Hey, Back guys. seven legions. Yep. <laughs> Like, and uh, I just want to say to Preston as well, look, I understand the whole name thing. Uh, it was someone with a speech impediment. Just so you know, I actually have to call you Preston Avocado so I know who people are talking about when they mean you. <laughs> just, just go with Nicky to pay. Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <Need> that too. <laughs> so that or good Preston. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And so, nice. Uh, so one thing people might not catch at first with the uh, lighting on and Seven Legions, uh, the angels have halos. But and those would appear to be something I would give off light, but they don't. Um, because like that's that's done on purpose. But like, uh, it, uh, so yeah, just I mean, a lot of times it's just you know finding interesting things to add interest to the scene, like or like uh, add focus to certain uh, objects, uh, like uh, you know, like uh, a light source to just sort of. Uh, you know, draw the eye, or you know, a lot of times, like, uh, like there, there's one scene where they're in a uh, laboratory. And that's mm-hmm. got like a ton of light sources. You got like this like glowing tank of this orange gas. You got this uh, overhead light. You got a light from a purple portal off to another side. So yeah, that that was a really fun one to lay out. But yeah. Hmm. Uh, so so Lucius. Um... I've seen a lot of your your various fan arts. There's there's fire. There's there's a lot of uh, glows and things like that. Dramatic mm-hmm. things you put in. Um, what is uh what is your thought process behind that? Like how do you how do you use that as as you know explaining what your character is doing? Um. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it can be just uh, you can use something like that sometimes for like a sense of motion, especially when it comes to flames, things like that. Uh, it'll like uh, I would say I don't do anything too um, kind of manga like in the way that I depict like motion graphically. I, like it's almost like a freeze frame whenever I do have like an action shot. Like very, very rarely do I rely on like motion lines. Um, or anything like that. So I kind of try to use stuff to depict a sense of, uh, you know, be like rubble or um, breakage or something like that to really get a sense of where the source of impact is on something where you are in a scene. Um, but yeah, I, I usually use use it to define um, kind of like a mood or, um, you know, like usually it's like glowing eyes like in my avatar here, uh, kind of like a sense of... Uh, working from that to give you like alternate light sources, especially like on like a face plane or something like that, where you really want to have a focal element. Uh, you can really use that for an effect uh, when it's all said and done. Um, I was actually trying to find something to uh, bring up again. Hmm. And let me share. This is from my uh, Twitter here. So okay. this is this is one I worked on where you can see the line art that I did here. You ready? No doxing. <laughs> I I don't think I have anything that's going to dox me. Uh, well, sometimes when you share Twitter, you know what I mean. You don't realize that your DMs are in the background and like there's. Oh uh, no 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 yeah yeah. Okay. So so it's kind of going from the. That's uh, what I'm talking about right here. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. All your various light sources you've got here. Yeah. So it's kind of like I'm using mainly his hands, the wheel. Uh, there's also the headlight itself and the trail of flame behind him. Plus, I was doing this weird thing where it's the uh, the bridge uh, uh, like support, and uh, so there's like the lights down below, uh, headlights of the cars down there, mm-hmm. uh, and sort of also the reflection of like city lights on what would be the water behind that. Um, so it was. It's just trying to kind of gre- create some sense of depth too, like with your light intensities, um, and and find out what you want it to be. And it's also the light, like on the uh, 
support beam itself, like at the front there, where the headlight would be kind of hitting, like thinking on the angle of it all. Uh, so yours, yours are very logical here, logical light source. Yeah, it's 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 breaking it down. It's also you know, metal objects are going to give you like a more of a hard light reflection, um, mm -hmm. uh, and other like more matte materials give a softer look to it. So yeah, you're sort of defining your your components as well as you do it. And of course, like anything that's like really bright, really flashy, you know, lens flary or something like that is going to draw attention, I think, just automatically. So it sort of defines your focal points as well, or where you want the eye to move around the page or something like that. It's, it's always something to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we always we always observe the kind of the rules, right? Um, background to foreground, light to dark, warm to cool. Um, or cool, cool to warm, right? Mm -hmm. Warm being in the foreground. We talked about that last week. Well, that's uh, all you people that are educated. You know, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't all these fucking naturally us, talented artists going? I have no idea what you're fucking talking us about. People us people that uh, us people that have to learn on our own. <laughs> God damn We're just it! Like that looks good. <laughs> just, fucking Preston, you, you know you guys that are naturally gifted. Just like I don't know, no one ever taught me shit, and like my stuff. This is how my stuff looks. I mean, I guess it's okay. Like I didn't know to paint from light to dark until <laughs> until recently. I was like, I'm supposed yeah. to do that. I was like, <laughs> oh, is that how it's done? Oh shit! <laughs> What's high score mean? Did I break it? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. <laughs> So, uh, Carla, fellow mangaka, hello, welcome. How do you approach light? What do you do? Because you draw ink and color your own stuff. The light. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, well, I should say that, first of all, I would say that I am very respectful of the lines. I think that a good colorist, you know, because in comics, it, normally it's a, a teamwork. That's not my case, but like you as a colorist, like there's certain stuff you can do to like make or break the page. But some, like, you also cannot get like too greedy and like try to color over everything, you know, like you have to respect the lines, respect as you say, like the light sources, where the cross hatching is, everything, you know, but also depends on the style of the inks. Some people just don't cross hatch, you know, so you have to learn to live with it. Um, but how I approach light, that's a, a very like wide question. There's several mm -hmm. responses to that. Well, let's, let me focus it in then. How about when you finished a page, right? Mm -hmm. You've drawn it, you've inked it, and now you're ready to color. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna take your lines you've drawn. You already know what what it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, are there? Do you ever discover other light sources after the fact when you're when you go to color your own work? Well, I experiment a lot. Uh, maybe for some people it's a nightmare, but for me it works. Not to be too like not not too premeditate stuff much like in general terms yes of course there is a a light a, like a major light source but mm -hmm. i like to experiment you know i prefer to just go straight to it okay maybe i can add some like shine here do i like it no okay never mind and do it's digital art right, right. <laughs> so so yeah I, I let myself experiment with that like I, I always choose like a main light source, but you know, there's also like the global illumination, like, you know, the, for example, like I, I always like to put like a, a cool tone and a warm tone. For example, you can have like a very like powerful, like a uh, warm light coming here, but I don't know, like there's something in this side that is like bluish or something. It can like also reflect on the face of the character, you know, like uh, th there's not like, only a single, a single source of light, but you know, you, you can't like apply this mechanically. It always depends on what you're trying to show. It also depends on the vibe of the, of the story, right? Because I could like, <laughs> I like like cute 
things and all like sparkly and fluffy, but I can't do that. Like, I, I mean, I, I did the Green Reaper, I cannot do that yeah. sometimes. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think it depends in the atmosphere you wanna you wanna project. I think it's like it's so 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 important. As as I said, you can make or break a perfectly drawn page with the colors. So mm. it's a very big responsibility. <laughs> and and your book is the Grim Reaper, correct? Written uh, by your husband John. Yes, exactly. And you you pencil inks colors. Yes. Um, so. In the Grim Reaper, I would imagine just the, just from the title, you've got a lot of really bright contrast with a lot of dark, dark, right? A lot of yeah, stupid uh, stuff, maybe glow I, from like moonlights and things like that, fire. Yeah, I mean that that came out like very like organically, very naturally. Like as I told you, like I wasn't like thinking too much about it. Uh, I. I just experiment. I sometimes recolor three, four times the same page until I say, okay, this I like, this works. I'm gonna uh, use this in future scenes like this. But for example, like I, I like to like group my, because I have like different like color palettes, right? And I like to group them depending on the scene so I can make the reader's life easier. So for example, if you like, you automatically re recognize these colors, oh, they are probably in this place, right? Or yeah. I don't know, like I think that the colors can tell a story too, they can speak too. And I don't know, like I think that it, since it's a, a very, of course, very visual, um, like way of uh, help me with the English, it's a whole other, it's a whole other form <laughs> yeah. of storytelling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's everything is so visual, you have no sounds, no music, no nothing, you know. So you have to, to rely on all the resources you can. So I think it's important also to, when I design a page, I dedicate a special like role to coloring. For example, mm. like I could like ink this, but I better do it with the color because it's, it's gonna like complement it better, you know? Um, I forget what I was saying. <laughs> I tell, you what, I, tell you what you, I tell you what you were saying. You were saying, and I heard you very loud and clearly, that colouring in comics, colouring is comics soundtrack. Ooh. Oh, shh. I like that. That's poetic. <laughs> That's poetic. Wow. I like it. Damn. Wow. It sounds like a few, uh, <clears throat> a few ales. That sounds very... Uh, Damn. Like nice, loose thinking there. Cheers to that, my friend. <laughs> Let me address the chat really quick, catch up with the chat. See, we've, we've, already, uh, we've already addressed... Half of it, uh, let's see, we've got Chuck Keyworth. Hey, brother, welcome. Jacob, Jacobus Gotex. Don't think I've ever, I've ever seen you before. Welcome. Um, uh, Mohammed Abu, what? As a boy from CG UK, he's uh, ah. learning to color. Another one like me. So I've dragged Excellent. him over here to come and have a watch. Excellent. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Mohammed is here. Hello, brother. Uh, Bristolian Dave. I still don't know what a Bristolian accent is. I'm hoping to discover it one day. <laughs> All right, me babber, I just sound like a cross between a farmer and a pirate. <laughs> it's a bit like that. A cross between a farmer and, and a, a pirate. pirate. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> uh, we got Chaotic Neutral. Uh, that is Wood Woody. Woody from Chaotic Neutral. Uh, he's got his Okuri Inu Demon Dog comic. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Look for that uh, mailing list on Indiegogo. David Feed, hello. Um, and let's see. Jason Black, welcome. Welcome. Excellent. Well, uh, I will show one thing. This is kind of um, this is a little little exploration from Xenotype. Amateur. So, amateur. Yeah, work. This is amateur work. <laughs> amateur work. Um, so, so in this in this page, uh, we have they're up in a pyramid in the sky. So they're above the clouds. They're getting direct sunlight from the sun out in space. But this is all inside. So this character, her name is Rowan. She is approaching the throne room for the for one of the big baddies, right? This door here. So she's obviously she's here. She's approaching that throne. Uh, she's going to go through this door into this big, big open space. And this is the side of the pyramid on the outside here. These window cut cutouts are allowing all this light in here. But this room, you can see from these little figures here how small they are. Get an idea of the scale of these hands. 
Mm-hmm. And then we have the, the uh, I think it's the Aztec or Mayan spaceman uh, thing on the wall here. And then, uh, you know, this is, this is the bad guy, Mao. He's sitting in front of the, one of these windows with his, with his throne face, or turned away from us. You just see the back of his hand. So, so with all that knowledge, knowing where it's at, it's up in the sky, it's above the clouds, we're going to have a lot of direct sunlight. The scale and the space between, the amount of air between your, your, the camera lens, which is your eye, and the figures, how far they are from you, how much atmospheric distortion we can add to increase the, the feeling of distance, right? How far away you are from some of these things. So let's take a look. So once the flats are in, just some basic flats, blue means air, right? Blue of the sky, browns, these are all pyramid colors, shit that's put together, this dirt and blocks and, you know, gold, opulence, because this is the bad guy. She's got pink hair because she's an anime waifu. It's a trope. <laughs> Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Why? Um, and, then, <laughs> and then we throw in uh, some rendering, some color rendering, just some some cloud shapes in the background, um, some rendering of the figures and whatnot. Then we throw in uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit of level adjustments. Right now, I'm, now I'm starting to darken the values. And now I'm going to start adding in light. So the backs of the, the chair is dark because it's on the other side of the light. There's no light source coming from behind. Render her skin, render her hair. But now, now is whenever I add in the distortion. It seems really dark. It's very, very dark. But we add the light sources. We add the atmospheric distortion between the camera lens and the back of the room, the distance. This, this scene right here, it goes from, it goes from, you know, just basic bitch, no light, <laughs> to a scene out of Aliens. Imagine that door opens up, light peeling through, split light sources on the ground. You've got one light source because there's multiple windows emitting light. It's all the same light source, but it's broken. So the windows are splitting the light source at her feet. The shadow, intense by her ankles, gradation as it, as it, makes, as it goes away from her, losing intensity. We're telling a story with light here, right? We're, we're telling the reader that she's about to enter a big room, and there's a lot of diffused light going on. And as she enters, we've got things in the foreground that are less affected by the light source, a little bit more in focus. This hand, a little bit less. The throne and the windows shaded with, with mist almost, right? All of these light sources are all diffused because of the distance from the camera lens to the back. And then when we get into the foreground, it's not so much. The light source is much more intense in your eyes. You see things much crisper. There's less distortion. It's more, much more focused, much, much more crisp. So that's telling to me that's telling a story with light taking taking the line art that has no light sources other than the rendering line weights uh cross hatches you know looking under her chin this is something a cap and uh, this is something cap and beacon both mentioned you can see these lines here that tells me the light's coming from this side across her right from up and behind slightly so you look under the chin you notice her, her back, there's cross hatches. It's in shadow. None of that rendering on the, on the desk is there telling me where the light source is at, but I know there's a big window. So when we go to add those light sources, we darken the front edge of the desk because it's in shadow. We illuminate the, the edges of this bird here because there's light peeling over the edge, and it's gold, so it's reflecting some light. So that's my thought process behind behind lighting and is telling you, stories. Is this is this you uh, making a bid to be known as the John Williams of comic book soundtracks? <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But but you know, so so there's a lot of thought that goes into into the lighting. There there could be you could feel through. You can use your instincts, right? But then you can 
what you'll see whenever I do my streams, you'll see me say all my streams, I could make a case for light being there and I'd put some light there. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I can't really justify light hitting that. So I'll shade that away. You know what I mean? So th you can, you can very deliberately and very methodically break down a panel. Look at all the things in the panel, where you're at, where you've been, uh, what things are in the scene and deconstruct it and add light sources that make sense. We haven't even talked about adding color to light. That's a whole other thing. Color temperature, right? Like adding blues to lights, adding purples to lights, adding yellows and reds to tell more dramatic stories. You know, also I've, like textures, like when you guys incorporate textures. In there. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Textured light. That's a, that's a, that's a whole other skill. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's a whole other skill. So, so yeah, so excellent. Um, do you guys have any other, any other art to show that you would like to, uh, illustrate maybe your use of light sources? Preston, I know you got some paintings. That's it. That's got some nice light sources. Yeah, let me get. I'll get a. Um, actually, let me see. Well, most of the horror stuff that I use, I like to use um, underlighting. You know, <laughs> underlighting is uh, a very dramatic tool. Yeah, because I mean, you can take like an average piece, like mm -hmm. just the guy standing there, and when you put the right lighting on it, it'll either make it look heroic or it'll look horrifying. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> uh in the interim i'll show what michael beacon has while while uh while preston's looking for his oh wait, all... <laughs> is that death 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 that's joe ball right <laughs> yep oh yeah, let's, so, let's get a zoom this, in on that yeah so this this had a lot of uh indications of light source in the original you got like the black right there black right there shading all that all over uh you know a lot of black down there so what I went with was a sunset sort of look. You got the, you know this sunset mm. colors across the sky. Uh, I like how you've I like how you've added over ink uh, on top of the idol that they're in front of. Yeah. Kind of to kind of screen it back a little bit and let the foreground really really you know shine. Yeah. And that 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 was a fun thing to color there. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Now, a point a point of order here on his on his deltoid and on his bicep. There's a thin bead of non-rendered, well, slightly rendered, uh, non-blacked area to define the muscle shape. Yeah, you could you could say that that's reflected rim light. Yep, and that's kind of what I've done there. I uh, added a second light source, the uh, light reflecting off the water down here. Give them a bit of underlighting right there. And, yeah, that's great. I see you've you've made the light get cooler as it hit the water. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And is and is this meant to be a sunset or a sunrise? By did you say sunset? Um, uh, I suppose it could be either or. It's just uh, they kind of look the same, just depending on what yeah. side of the planet they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, that's very cool. Shit. What are you laughing about, Cap? I'm not laughing. I've just, uh, I've just, I've, I've gone into the private chat and I've taken the link by Mr. Avocado, and my mind's just exploded. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, wow, that's oh. some old work. Oh, it's a flicker. Oh, I don't care if it's old or not, mate. This is that's exceptional. That's why I used to play light a lot, like back then. Yeah. You don't wow. want to share it yourself. You're gonna make me do the work. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Wow. I'll gladly, <laughs> gladly we'll do the work here. Holy is this shit. all traditional? Okay. All right. Well, I guess so. It's a traditional yeah, it's art at the top. Mm -hmm. Sorry, panel. I brought I brought the fucking heavy hitter in, and he's gonna try to make us all look bad. <laughs> <laughs> look at this fucking work, man. Can oh, wow. you, oh can, no, you need your own website, analogavocado.com. <laughs> the avocado These are paintings. <laughs> These are paintings, friends. Paintings. Wow. This is what? Is this, this is acrylic on canvas? All acrylic. Yeah. Yeah, that trips people out sometimes because they're like, that looks like oils. I'm okay, like, I've got a question then. If you're using if you're in uh, do you, uh, if you're using acrylic, um do you uh, any use ever use glazing mediums? Uh no, no. What I do is I I I, I had to come up with a mixture to make them work like oils. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> because I'm a slow painter. 
Yeah. And um, you, think about acrylic, you you're very time bound. You're time yeah, bound. So I had to start adding oils to my acrylics, you know, and, and stuff oh. like that. Not to the point to where it would change the medium, but to where it would give me more time to be able to work with them, you yeah. know, and blend them so, and stuff like that. They so that that's one of my favorites right there, the Hall of the Monkey King. And um, Hall of the Monkey King. Yeah. What the? Why are you not? So you won't you won't use a retarder or anything like that then? I, I tried to retard it that it. they that they have for and I, I spent like a ton of money for it. You know, it was like twenty yeah. twenty some odd dollars for a little four ounce bottle of the retarder. Yeah, that they, yeah, it's expensive. As and well. it's garbage. All it did was thin thin the paint out and make it more transparent. Yeah. yeah. So let's think about this. So we've got this crystal ball in the middle. It's emitting a picture that they're all looking at. So the light is coming. It's coming, it's radiating in a, in a yeah. spherical pattern, coming from the middle, hitting the underlight of the Monkey King in the background, right? The undersides of his, of, his, of his face and undersides of his cheekbones and eye sockets, undersides of his hands. But then the monkeys on the side, it's illuminating the sides of their face. You're getting, you're getting strong terminating lines on, their, on their, their, their brow, their mandible, the sides of their nose. So light. In the bottom coming, shadow underneath the ball. Mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that makes it stand out too. Like it, yeah. You know, it Even the cast shadow from the monkey in the foreground here, his entire, his in entire back is black, and the cast shadow is black from him. So you're telling this spherical light story here. It's yeah. fantastic. And it's got that wicked look because it's all like the top monkey, like the the king is, you know, he's underlit. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives it more of an eerie look to it. Yeah. Underlighting tends to be more sinister. Usually. Yeah. I you love know. using that. That shit's better. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe that that might be the case because, you know, whenever whenever you have sinister shapes, they're 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 kind of hulking over things, so people are looking up at them, and maybe the the light is always hitting from underneath. You know what I mean? That that dramatic, dramatic storytelling. Maybe they're maybe the moonlight is behind them, but there's a flashlight coming up at them, and you're seeing this zombie like <laughs> you know, exactly, you? yeah. Like, I'm still trying to get that guy to sell me that painting bag. Like, be careful what you sell because sometimes you're <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That Predator's fucking badass. Yeah. Ah. I'm a big fan of Frazetta. Frazetta was a master of light, too. Like, mm. he was a. Uh, he was a genius when it came to it. Yeah. Frazetta, too, his anatomy, like, he, he always drew his women a little thick. You know what I mean? I like, like doing that, too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and it felt it made it more realistic because yes. they were idealized but Absolutely. at the same time they they were realistic you know yeah so for yeah. that was but, exclusively oils too that was um his uh so his, yeah i mean it, it was weird but his his i don't know you know like and i don't think he painted big i think that's why like there's not a ton of detail in a lot of his work you know mm -hmm. except for death dealer i think death dealer was the uh like he painted big with death dealer you know but what yeah. acrylics do you use? I, I don't know if you it. can zoom in on that one. Like, that's got a lot of... Yeah, there you go. Holy like, shit. I put a lot of graffiti on the uh, inside of the sewer tunnels. <laughs> I see you got the Superman logo right there. Very yeah. nice. And then it says, sucks. Yeah, like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I just pretended I didn't see that. You didn't yeah. need to point that out. <laughs> but I like... I, I tried to put in a lot of characters from uh, the Spider-Man series, like... Mm -hmm. into them on the side there like the vulture club you know and oh uh, yeah 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 different things like that yeah, yeah but, like electro right here as well yeah now with the i i was actually going for more of a frisetta look to uh venom's look on that one you know with the muscles and stuff like that and blends and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, i see you got a little rim light on his uh on the top edge of uh all his arms and fingers and stuff yeah got light source coming from behind it is yeah, and then there's a slight, not too much, but just a hair of an ambient light coming off too, like of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what all the color temperatures pressure? are reasonable too. There's no strange color temperatures. It's all yeah. even. I, 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 like that's one thing that I like about Frazetta too, though, was that he never started out with a plan whenever he started painting. Like he was just like, he wanted to see where the painting was going to take him, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I like to do too. Is like, I don't like to be too deep. Like when I'm doing stuff for customers, either like I'll be like, it's gonna look kind of like this, <laughs> right? And then because you you kind of have to let. And this is something I used to tell people when I when I used to airbrush, 
Like, um, they would say, how do you know to do this? And I'd be like, I would wait for the paint to go ahead and tell me where I'm supposed to go with it. You know, and they're like, bullshit. I was like, I was like no, like, I'm, I'm being serious. Like, when you put down those initial strokes, like, you can, like, read into those strokes on what you're supposed to do next. You know, and with painting, yeah. it's kind of like when you lay down those flats, you kind of have to look at the flats and figure out where you're supposed to go next with it. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and and you because this is this is uh this is paint over, you don't have rendering to follow. You just gotta yeah. you gotta feel your way through the form and the light. Uh, Bisley, like in some of his he he's one of those he actually went to art school, but his technique and a lot of it he breaks the rules because he doesn't do light to dark. He does dark to light in a lot of his stuff. You know, like he'll do super, super dark flats and then go back and build up until he gets to a highlight, you know, mm. and that's, that's why I render his, that's how yeah, I render his muscle. That. That's why his muscle structures look like they do. You know? mm. Interesting. It's all about breaking down the uh, the artist process, like whatever artist you're trying to like borrow from or steal from whatever. It's about breaking down their process. You know? Yeah. Let's see. Here we got we got in this uh, Jason piece. We got a light source on the left here that's illuminating the glove. Yeah, a little bit on the. I chest. was actually dupe like I was using a statue of Jason as the model for that. Mm. So it uh, so yeah, like that was more of a practice piece because that was really early on, and I was trying to figure out um how to paint like how to get better, basically because with yeah. that statue. It had a lot of wrinkles in the um, in the jacket, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, tatters and stuff like that. So I was trying to figure out how to get that and, you know, working with the cracks in a mask and stuff like that. Like just stupid shit, you know. Some of it is brush stroke. Some of it is brush selection. Um, you know, those those things can aid in, in, you know, shaping the form and putting light in. You but say I never. That's another thing, too. Like as far as brushes, like I haven't really. Like I'm starting to learn more about using different brushes to get different effects. <laughs> so you just use a round? You just use Yeah, a like I, I I like I said, I fly by the seat of my fan my pants, dude. Like I don't <laughs> like I, I'm like I'll pick a brush and be like, let's see what this one does. You know, and yeah. And I'm just now learning like like, you know, longer, skinnier quills, like they they make better they they're better for doing like whis whiskers and hair and stuff mm -hmm. like that and you know their liner brushes is what they are you know and but um yeah like I I, I probably know less about painting than most painters <laughs> professional painters out there. <laughs> or well, average you know, painters out there you know what I'm saying like <laughs> sometimes the rules get in the way yeah you know what I mean. Like, I think it's better that I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, that Skeletor, if you go back to that Skeletor, that Skeletor was a uh, um, bottom lit piece. Like, I did the sketch, and then I tried to, you know, I used my pencil to kind of figure out where I was going to lay in all uh, the uh, shade in that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, does anybody else have any art to show? I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to get to know what acrylics he can use. <laughs> because, man, I could sit here and look at Preston's art for, for forever. It's... I guess not. I, I uh... did a piece like this week, but I cannot show it. It's for the Mothman. Oh, that was fun, too. That, uh, uh, it's a commission, so I can't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that Cortana and Master Chief? Like. Ah. That was definitely something that was cool. That was one of my, like, I, I never used any, like, I never sketched Cortana in there. Like, mm -hmm. I, I just kind of used my brush to sketch her in and just painted her in. But the, uh, I knew she was going to be the light source, you know? Right. So I kind of based the whole painting off of her, like, being in the middle, like, coming out of the palm of his hand. Well, you've got, you've got, like, a Covenant reflected purple light source. Yeah. Because yeah. the Covenant tends to be a lot of blues and purples. Well, you know, like when you use your color theory and you're um, you're playing with your color theory, right? And mm -hmm. um, purple and, and orange and yellow supposedly work together really well. Um, 
and so does blue and orange and yellow and stuff like that. But the problem is, is that you don't want to base your whole painting or color piece off of what works together. Like if you were to just use green and red, because according to color theory, those two are the be work. They like they work best together, right? Because well, they're complements, right? If you look at the yeah, primaries, red, they complement each other red, right? exactly. The comp you the, would end the, up with a painting of like Christmas, you know. <laughs> the secondary of two primaries, the, yeah. the primary that's directly along the opposite angle from the secondary is exactly. the direct complement. So yeah. If you go around the color wheel, those two colors when overlapped with each other create vibration. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. But if you did that, you would end up something that would be tacky and it would be like Christmas, right? But if you use one of them as your main color and just speckled in or hinted in the other color, then it becomes a work in peace, you know, like something that's yeah. more interesting to look at. Now, this is all my old work, but the newer work, if you've noticed, like I've been, I've been playing with color more, you know, mm. and like just dropping in color like crazy. Hold on, I'll send you a to, um, my okay. uh more recent stuff so so as you can see looking across the breadth of all these paintings here the light sources vary they are they're anywhere from uh light sources emitted from objects in the scene um from celestial ob uh celestial objects up in the sky um it, like this jason piece you've got some kind of light coming from the left that's illuminating his left side so you know, the, these are these are determined by the artist. But, you know, when we look at like the mask right here on this dead space, uh, there's green light coming out of the mask. So it's you can you can reasonably say just from your understanding of form, where is that green light going to hit? His deltoid is curved and it goes away. That was one of the first pieces I did like that. That was mm -hmm. old, too, dude. I think that's 2014 or 2012 or something like that. Yeah. Like, and um. Yeah, I was still figuring shit out back then. You can yeah. use logic and understanding of the actual shapes you're looking at to determine where light is going to hit. You know, draw lines from it. See what see what hits surfaces and what what is hidden from those surfaces. That'll help you. Uh, that'll help you tell a light story, which is what we're talking. We're talking about light sources in particular. Yeah. So yeah, so that's great. Playing, playing around, and just having fun. That's mm -hmm. where all your creativity comes from. You know, right like being uptight about it like i was you know? <laughs> yeah. you're going to throw away a lot of paper and a lot of canvas if you right <laughs> oh okay so we've got some shares from both carla and lucius so let's let's put carla's <laughs> nice yeah all right that's great thank you very that's much cool. yeah i mean a little tug going on there yeah <laughs> yeah th this is uh, my my entry for the contest, which I actually won, and I'm so happy about that. <laughs> but like, well, like I see it. Uh, I I like how I did with the color, like especially in the first part. But like I would like I would like to have added like more time to it, you know. Uh, but you know, like there was like this uh, this. Um, oh my god, my English today, damn. <laughs> this uh, <laughs> you have to 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 deliver the work in a date, right? What was deadline? Deadline that uh, th there was a tight deadline. So, um, but I think I, I I wanted to share this one especially because like there's like two things going on at the same time. Like there's like this daylight scene in the first in the upper part of the image, but then we have like this night kind of night scene with the lamp. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's it's two different kind of kinds of living in the same image. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so is that is that uh, is that really warm sphere? Is is that uh, are those two different panels? It looks like two different panels. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> like I I don't think about it when I do it, and I don't think about it after. So it's so hard for me to explain what Man. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All you I, instinctual artists, please. Yeah, so is that I, supposed I to be like, a dream? Like no, a dream? She, she's, uh, because th this is the thing, I try to, uh, th that's Lug, right? That's uh, yeah. Umbrella's daughter. And she she's a storyteller, you know? She's like her dad. She likes to tell stories. So that's basically her, her bedtime. And I don't know if this is like a personal thing, but when I when I was a kid, I always like, read until I fall asleep and 
I like to like, I don't know, like I, I, I somehow did like the click there and, and I thought like maybe in her bedtime, instead of being told stories, she was telling the stories. So, <laughs> I mean, because like I've, I've, I've seen her like in a lot of streams, not, not seen, but heard her. And she's so silly. Like, she, she, she tells all kinds of stories. So I wanted to like, um, do like some kind of homage to that. I don't know how, what's the word, but like to show that side of her, right? That's something that she particularly has that she likes to tell stories. So she's basically telling a crazy event that may have happened to her and the and this huge octopus. Got it. Okay. Okay. So this is, <laughs> this is her telling us. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. I, I love it. <laughs> And see, I'm into manga, so like when I see your style, I just I just get all giddy. I love I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, you know. Like there there's so many like great artists in in this community and great work. And like of course you recognize when something is quality and very well done. But when something is your style, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens to me too. Like yeah, when when I see everything manga. Um. So yeah, like I mean, it's not like. I don't know, like I, I, I work, I try to work as fast as possible and I, I'm always, I don't know if it's just me, maybe you, you guys too, but like, I'm always like wishing I could like work more time on it Yeah. Uh, or like, oh, oh I could have added this and then added this, but okay, like this is what we have, okay? <laughs> so it's interesting, this piece in particular, so this is a great, you know, a, a great segue. So we've got two panels here. One, the, the main character is telling a story it's, she's recounting something. So it has a whole separate set of light sources that are disconnected from the bottom. The bottom yeah. is looks like a bedroom. She's talking about something. There's a, there's a bed lamp next to them. So it's very warm, but the, the room is cool because it's nighttime. She's getting ready for bed. She's telling a story that's during the day. There's a, maybe it's a sunset off to the right, off to the right side on the tentacle. You can see light, light coming through. Everything else is kind of in shadow. There's a little bit of an underlight on the underside of uh, Tug's hand. A little bit of a little bit of a shine along the rim of the tentacle, so you know your light sources. They're in. They're not dependent on one another because those are two different places. One is being recounted. The other one is you know the the main where the main where the character is in the moment. So, so that's that's great. I I, I really like this. this Thanks. I, I think it's, it's a little want. bit chaotic, you know, <laughs> but I try to apply like my manga kind of. I don't know. Like I I just see it as. Like I try to break, right? Because I could have added like a perfect circle or like a perfect square, like or like right. the thought bubble. I try to make it like so you like it's it's not like that predictable. I, I try to do that with the colors, with with the shapes and stuff. Um, well, you instinctively used Fibonacci in many places here. So, what was that? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. You could Google okay. it. <laughs> I'm scared because last time I Google stuff, you told me Scotsman. Whoa, whoa, you can't say stuff like that. <laughs> you can't say stuff like that. It looks like she used the the blue waffle technique. <laughs> no, don't, don't even do that. Don't do that. All right, let's take a, let's take a look at Lucius, and then we'll Preston shared his Instagram. We'll share that. All right, so Lucius, what we got here? Oh, that's All cool. right. So this was kind of more of like a study. Uh, no, this is I'm really, writer, right? Yes, yes. I'm trying to flesh out the look as I go along. Like I did a whole series of them, uh, and this is kind of me figuring out really where I want the light sources be. Uh, you know, and it's really just nighttime and just him. You know, just like the flame of like the the body uh, and everything from underneath his bones. Right, and. Um, trying to determine what I want the whole look to look like. It's more than just that, but that's primarily what I'm going with here. And really probably more than anything is the hands. I didn't know if I wanted to be gloved or whether I wanted it to just be like exposed and what I would do for like the skeletal like fingers and everything, how I would show those, uh, you know, would, would they block out some of the flame or whatever? So it, it's just kind of like a study piece that I did uh, and determining like just how much light they would give off and everything. So they're sort of like atmospheric. Do I want sparks? Uh, things like that. And I, I happen to notice um, when I went through my timeline here, I have this great, great Carla clip here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Where is it? 
Great right car here. clips tend to be yeah. interesting linguistic adventures. Oh, oh, oh this that's... this this is very much yeah. to do with the mouth. Oh no no no! <laughs> Don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't share the audio. Oh well, no, you, you it's it's not necessarily the audio. Just wait, you'll see. It's, <laughs> why? It, why? No, this is bullying. This, <laughs> look, watch this. Watch this. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me put in context. Okay, we were like in two members <laughs> of the panel. <laughs> we were trying to entertain the people there. Oh, happy birthday, brother. In oh, the, hello. Vinny, hello. showed up at the right time. Been, what's up? <laughs> oh, good. Save me. Save me. <laughs> what, what did I miss? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Carla just swallowing her fist. I don't know. <laughs> just daily stuff, you know. God bless. <laughs> That's a talent. Well, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> All right, welcome to the stream, Vinny. We've been talking about light sources. We, You know, you are also an accomplished uh, digital painter style um you right. color yourself you, you use a lot of beautiful smooth renders and blends but a lot of very distinct light sources we're going to look at preston's uh preston's instagram and then we're going to get your thoughts on uh on how you determine your light sources okay so what do we got here preston uh well i mean um scroll down a little bit and you can uh you can see some of the new, like that Beast Man and stuff like that. You know, here. Um, That's no, death, no, death, no, no. Ah, okay. Um, Beast Man, Let's Beast see. Man. More, more, more. Oh, oh there's the Predator. Oh, that's a good one this too. Like that one with Vigil, right there. Like the Angel, and but um, yeah. Peregrine. So this yeah, one, yeah, right at right, yeah, that one, that one right there. Okay. Like that one. That one was cool because it had a lot of ambient light sources too. Like I couldn't put the light directly on her because it was it was it was kind of it was a weird type of thing because the like the area was supposed to be kind of well lit, but most of the light was supposedly coming from the back and the in the underside. You see what I'm saying? So it was yeah, kind of see weird. warm light coming underneath. Yeah. There. It was mm -hmm. definitely a strange kind of mixture, but it kind of came together, you know. You know, then again, you've got on the on the hood here. You've got a split light source. You've got a nice dark yeah. ambient occlusion, and then like this gradation that comes off of her cheek here. So that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes you have to guess and not mm -hmm. like you know, like set yeah. any boundaries on yourself, you know? Because I like there's no real rules with life, you know. And um, it's kind of like when you do fire. You know what I'm saying? Like people try to put a pattern on fire, but you can't because fire is chaotic. Mm -hmm. You know. The He-Man like piece. Yeah, I figured you'd click on that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like a beefcake well, just like <laughs> the next guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Like the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I started using right? a lot more color, too. Like, just dropping color in. I used to be afraid of color, dude. Like, seriously scared of it. But if you notice that Beastman and uh, Trapjaw and all those other ones, like, I kind of started to overcome that overcome that fear by just bleeding color in. You know? There's a lot of color in this piece. It's very yeah. colorful, very and very it, colorful, uh, and it kind of all works. I don't like that's. I think it's because you have to, like, you have to kind of feel your way through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just plan that shit out beforehand. You know. So you kinda, you're in this one. You've got you've got some underlighting. You've got some light source coming from here. Some some green coming from the foliage. A little yeah. bit of light up here. A little bit of light from something up in the sky. You know, there's a lot of lot of subtlety. That's yeah, it's, it's crazy, there. dude. Like you have your main light source, and then you just go have fun with the rest of it. You know. Mm -hmm. you know? I think it and works. that's the thing too. As long as it's consistent, right? As yeah. long as you tell the story and you're consistent with it, you can put a light anywhere. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, you always want to have your main light source. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing about doing stuff like this is you want to highlight the character. You know, you don't want to. Mm -hmm. You want to draw people's eye in on on the character, and not um, like all over the page. Now with this one, I kind of used the same layout that. Uh, Frazetta used with his um, Mothman painting, mm, like the mm -hmm. original Mothman painting, yeah. where he had for some odd reason, he threw a bunch of big spaceships behind Mothman. You remember that? Like, uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. It was kind of weird. Like, it's almost like it was an afterthought. 
like he kind of threw it in there afterwards, you know. And it might but, have been. Uh, I mean, I kind of get the been. layout. <laughs> yeah, I kind of get the right. layout because he um he was doing a lot of stuff. It was you know per per like he was doing it for magazines and shit like that. So there's no telling where the logo was going to fit mm. on there. And back then they never had computers to do the work. So, you know, he had to kind of like visualize that shit beforehand, you know, yeah. and just lay it out, you know, with, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so great. I kind of, I kind of used that with this and it kind of worked. It shouldn't have worked like, you know, but it, it does. So consistency you know, tends to make things work. That yeah. shouldn't, <laughs> so I'm talking about the big skull head in the background right there. Oh, just, oh, the Skeletor, you know, the Skeletor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah, way back there. Well, because he's not part of the main lights light scheme. No, he's no, like, he has nothing to do with any of it. Yeah, know? it's just kind he's of ghosted in. Ominous, so, yeah, it's an ominous figure and part of the composition. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me address the chat real quick. We've got a few new people. <clears throat> Let's see. We got ink spots in the chat. Where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> 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 we got rotten glory hello it's been a minute man i hope you're doing well um i know you're you're in crazy town with me so you know hope you're doing well tatsunami thanks for stopping in appreciate you and liam gray hey liam hey brother uh vinny yes Vinny, we've sir. been talking about light sources we've been talking about um where each of us look on the line art to figure out where light comes from uh, whether we use light sources we create that aren't really there or we we find things in the scene that emit light like TVs or lamps or sunlight or whatever moonlight all that stuff so you're a you're a master painter as well so let's uh oh ooh, 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 you're really sharing that huh mm. <laughs> you want nice. to see light sources and stuff nice. yeah so, sometimes it's good to go with a simple light source right yeah so yeah. I, I map that shit out in my head when I'm in the penciling stages. Mm. So like th this was all tight pencils before I put any, any, pen, um, any paint on it whatsoever. I even left a lot of my pencil line work in here so people could see more of that type of stuff. You can see the grit of, of like yeah. the pencils in there. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I knew where I wanted the light source to come from, which was going to be um, that, that kind of uh, sundown-ish um, or, or like you're even like the twilight uh not really twilight but you know what i'm talking about it's right especially in new york city i mean you see a lot of those kind of orangey colors the way that when the sun hits these buildings and it, it lights everything up like a fucking christmas tree almost so i wanted to get a lot of like those those cool shines happening and um something that's gonna it's gonna feel warm since spider-man has both the warm and the cool colors to him in his color scheme uh i kind of wanted to do that but even um like, cause you're gonna get shadowing. So the shadowing, I just, I kind of kept it on him mostly. I didn't put it too much in the buildings. You can see a little bit here and there in some of the shadows. I didn't go pure black. A lot of people tend to do that. Just um, cool, cool tones. Yeah, yeah, just little cool tones here and there. Um, and I, I think it really it sets it all off. But since his uh, like his webbing is like all translucent kind of, uh, I thought I'd have a a lot of fun uh, painting that out since like when the light hits it, it, it is going to light up. It's going to look like there's, um, there's almost like a flashlight inside the webbing, you know, like it's mm -hmm. just like, that's another source almost, but it isn't. Um, so yeah, to make sure you get those nice reflective lights in there. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, like you said though, I try to think about the scene, right? I try to think about what else is going on. Um, so like something like this one, uh, it is kind of an offset lighting that's coming from the background. Like there's fire, whatever kind of, uh, uh, fucked up scene that they're coming from. Uh, but again, there's, there's a lot of uh, warms and cools in here. I put a lot more into this one uh, with the background, with the shadowing on them. Um, but yeah, you, you try to keep those light sources. I try to keep them simple anyway, because um, you could do a lot with it. And then you got to think about texture, right? So even like her, her armor and stuff, um, you want to have different variations since let's say she is a warrior, you know, you got to get into that mindset of telling the story. So like if, if her costume went through some shit, you're going to see uh, some damages in here and there. So when the light yeah. hits it, it's going to reflect differently. It's not going to be super smooth, but some, some parts will be. So like you got Batman, he's, he's got more of like a rubbery kind of, kind of suit, right? So his, his cape is going to have a little bit 
more of like a reflective light to it. So, um, and it's interesting the composition you chose. You put her on the light side and him on the dark side. Right. You know, and then to kind of reinforce their characters. Now, Vinny, exactly. on Superman, mm -hmm. you did you intentionally make him look like you, or was it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty super. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was did thinking one more. his package too, or was it? I was thinking a little bit of like uh, Cavill. <laughs> no, it's kind of it's back there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't enhance that one so much. Just let it flow. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Scottman said, I mean, you know, uh, you gotta like some beefcake every now and then, right? Just yeah. like, like just like the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, as I was saying, like with Superman, he he's kind of a little bit of both, right? Since his powers and shit, how strong he is. So he's kind of like he's in the middle of the composition of light or dark. You know, he, he he's kind of the balance between the two. He's not so much as um, uh, Christ-like as, as people tend to make him all the time. So the way that I was looking at him is he's a little bit more of – he's in the middle because he could go either way. That's how strong he is, right? He just chooses to go to the light side. But that's just shit that's in my own head, right? Um, but, yeah, so for the composition, like you said, we got the light, the dark, the balance. Um, and I, I think it covers it pretty well. Yeah, yeah. But um, let me see. Something like this. He, I, I, he's running through the speed force, so I'm light's going to be all over the place in all different areas. But I wanted to keep like you know all that lightning and shit happening. You know, play with again like the suit itself. Fuck, that's a complicated light story. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, dude. Yeah, th yeah. This one is just this yeah. is insane. But I mean, I had fun working on it. It's the first time I ever did this character. You know, so yeah. I, I've if you're gonna go all out, you know, might as well fucking go all out. That's right. So, yeah, I had, I had fun with that one. Uh, something like this, again, it's kind of like from behind her, but there's also, she's being kind of attacked. If you look at the story, so there's there's bullets being shot at the car. So she, obviously, she picked up some bad guys, and there's some more shooting at her. Mm -hmm. So I'm having, again, a lot of like reflective light hitting off of her costume. Um, that kind of thing. Wait, is she getting shot in the boob right there? She getting shot in the boob. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta show she's bulletproof, right? You know, you shot her right in the tet. You know what are you gonna do? Right? You should have made it. You should have made it like an air pocket too. Like, pssst, like I do out. like. I do. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I do like how you took occasion to flip the skirt up just to get the round of the ass to poke out just a little bit. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. Gratuitous. It's, it's all about the storytelling, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing gratuitous. is tasteful, right? I could have actually put another bullet shot there, but <laughs> that would have been too on the nose, though. You know Maybe, I mean? yeah, possibly. So, but yeah, like, like even the background. So, but there's a lot of lighting there, so that's why I kind of faded it out a bit because mm -hmm. that, that you know, like the ambient light that's coming in, you're not going to see everything clear. crystal clear. You know, it's it's going to have distance to it, depth. So, for yeah, for this piece, I was kind of it makes her pop even more because of something like that. So, when you're coloring too, you got to think about the contrast light against dark uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people seem to forget that and that's why things look either too muddy or they don't know how to how to really create that distance so it's kind of like all the same it feels like it's all in the same plane yeah but yeah yeah, the yeah, to, yeah yeah the way to create depth is is, is that way i mean yeah you want to want distance in there so don't be afraid to play around uh something like this nighttime scene it's darker um so we're going to get some of the natural outside lighting that's coming in uh, she's got a super highly reflective uh, costume. So it's, it's like, again, more like this kind of rubbery material. So we got to get the nice shines in there. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, reflection off the floor. Some, definitely some nice shines in there. Yeah. I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's something you like a lot. <laughs> I like the shines. Yeah, hey, but again, I like shines like the next guy. You know what I mean? Exactly, man. Exactly. And then something like this, too, like uh, to dissect it further. I mean, like the trees and stuff that that are on the other side of the glass. Um, the way that the actual like natural lighting is coming in, you're gonna have more of a fade out. So once that happens, too, you got to think about the other light that's coming in. So that's why I put like streaks in there. Because um, if you've ever been like in in an area like that, um, yeah, to you, make that happen, you got to go on top of the ink in order to make that right screen back all that other detail in the background. Yeah, you could do that, but like below the ink. Yeah, um, th there's all different ways of doing it, 
but I kind of like again I approach it more like like a Frazetta type of thing too, right? Uh, these are all yeah. in my mind. I do them like traditional paintings. So yeah, you're painting over. You're doing you're doing pencils and then painting over it. I'm right. I'm, I'm bringing it to like a comic book context where mm -hmm. how would you get that those that glass to feel like that? Well, you got to go above the ink in a comic book setting. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, yeah, like I said, there's so many different styles and ways of doing it uh, and to explain it to people. But uh, yeah, I just, again, I'm self-taught, so uh, I don't know all the all the technical terms and all that shit. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I've studied people like <laughs> Frazetta, like Boris Vallejo, uh, Da Vinci. Um, you know, you got to get the Renaissance guys in there. You can't leave that kind of stuff out. But even if I'm not doing pencils, if I'm doing ink as well, uh, it's going to have like a different feel to it. Um, but I'm trying to capture the same thing with my, with, with the paints. Is For that me, a line art from you? Uh, did I ink this one? Zoom in. Cause I don't think I've no. ever seen inked straight inked line art that's been colored. That isn't digitally painted from you. Uh, yeah, you have. What? It's yep. always like, it's always like, you know, rendered and painted and beautiful. I, I'm talking like, like black lines with comic book colors. I don't think I've seen too much, if, if any. Well, if even, the one I sh even the one I showed you last night, that was all, that's traditionally ink, the entire thing. Was it colored, like comic book colored, or was it painted? Uh, a little bit of both, I guess. Because okay. here, here, here's the thing. A lot of people, they have these fucking rules, and uh, they, don't, they don't seem to want to break them. For me, what I'm creating, no one tells me what to do. So if I want to color over... Uh, paint right over my line work, I'm going to do it if, it if it benefits the piece. For me, it's the integrity of the artwork that should come through and not a specific um, rule book, so, so to speak, you know. Um, that's just the way that I've done things. I, I respect people who do it the way that they do it. But for me and the style that I developed, it's because of that. It's because I've, I've, my whole career I've been fighting against uh, people who said, you got to do it this way. You got to do it that yeah. way. Batman's not not Jim Lee enough. Uh, all, all the kind of horse shit, uh, the brainwashing. I'm fucking sick of that kind of thing. So I don't know about you, Vinny, but it looks like Batman is about to get the worst blowjob he's ever gotten in his life. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get poison ivy. He's gonna get yeah. some spikes in this, the jump. This is actually the piece that Malin called um, Smiller out on. That Smiller redrew this. Mm. This was the piece. Yikes. So, Big so yikes. I wanted to kind of show you that one so you could have a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that crazy motherfucker the other night. Um, uh, something like this, too. Again, we got clearly you can see where the light source is coming from. It is a big, beautiful uh, chest. I mean, sky that's out there. And, sky, yes. yes. So you want to make heavenly, sure. Heavenly bodies up in the sky. Right. And this was, this was based on one of my friends as well. Um, so, yeah. So, like, the way that I did the sky, too, I wanted something that's going to look very um almost fo photo real but it's not this is all painted out i don't i don't slip in any of that kind of cheap tricks in there um no pictures or anything no like pictures that? i mean you can get in there you, you can see it as well so uh, you can actually see the brush strokes mm -hmm. like in the clouds and stuff so it's I, i'll develop like uh, or play with some some textures uh that i create and uh but yeah, for me, most of my pieces start with the backgrounds first. That's that's where I determine my light sources, and then I kind of go from there. So, um, and again, like how her suit is, it's it's very white. So, what's a good way of of doing this? That's right? racist. Uh, calm down, man. Right. <laughs> it's racist. So we got the we have the reflective colors that are bouncing off. So that's why we have some pinks in there. It's from the red of the cape. Uh, there's things you have to think about, right? So if the light, the sunlight is hitting it, it's going to reflect back. Um, same thing like with the with the uh, strong light sources on on mm -hmm. the right side of her, like that. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of all self-explanatory. I like to put rim lighting, uh, like on the face, to separate. Like I said, the uh, the good contrast is what's going to make things uh, kind of pop as well. So that's why I put like the uh, the shadowing on her hair. And then do the uh, the room lighting and like her face really like it's it's there, man. It's it's popping. Hey, I I have to uh, I have to cut out. Um, it's been good talking to you guys. Yeah, brother. I got yeah, Preston. Uh, well, we're, we're actually we're actually at an hour and a half. 
so we're we're uh we're 30 minutes past what i usually do i usually do want to try to do an hour and we'll just let a few minutes go by as as uh if, if we're on a roll we've been on a roll so yeah. if no, we, this is kind of a big subject there's like <laughs> yeah well light sources is it's bigger than just an hour for sure yeah. <laughs> all right i'll talk to you guys lady i'll take it easy cool anything yeah. you want to promo on the way out preston anything you want to promo oh yeah just back doc salem and uh doc salem yeah. on Andy Gogo. okay all right yeah, take it easy take it easy bud thanks for coming up good one, man nice good guy pretty good artist too pretty good pretty good <laughs> fair 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 uh yeah, so I mean, I don't know if I'm getting if I'm talking too much, but no, no, no. There's just yeah, like you said, there, there's a, there's a lot going on in a lot of these different pieces. So uh, I figured I'd grab the vol volume. I think this is volume one of my art book. Uh, I'm just mm -hmm. going through through some of the uh, pieces to give you a little bit of a breakdown. Um, mm -hmm. This one was done a little bit more like uh, like kind of like a movie poster style. So I got like some Drew Struzan type of uh, textures and like kind of lines I wanted to pop in there. Because again, it gives good separation, good depth, uh, and you want that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah. you've got you've got like a sunset. You've got mm -hmm. a strong light source coming on the shoulder. It's gleaming off the armor. It's gleaming off of the rooftop and and some of the cherry blossoms and whatnot. Right. Yeah. And and that's what, some of these things too. Like even if it's an image that uh, technically, if you want to play with like movie poster type of ideas and things. Some of the light sources I will use. Like, so the main light source is going to be hitting like all three of them a bit. Um, but other light sources, they're not going to, they're not really going to touch the other ones. So like he's got his green glow. It's only shining and you can see parts of it on him only. Um, I've done that kind of thing too. You know, it's, it's, it's all about experimenting. It's to see what's going to work, what's going to complement the piece. Um, you know, it's I, sometimes it's a little tricky to explain, but um, nice. Yeah, it's just nice. Kind of all over the place when when I work, and it depends on what the pieces are. Uh, again, this one, another simple one, background. So most of the light sources coming from there, and then the lightning from her, from her fingers. Um, you know, we have some from the actual like, a lightsaber weapon shit. Uh, but yeah, it, you gotta you just gotta kind of play around with it and, and what you're gonna do. Um, something like this, like she would probably have, you got to bend rules as well. So, uh, something like this, she, she would probably have a lot more darker areas on her, but, uh, since again, I wanted her to stand out a bit more. Um, I just kind of did a little bit of shadowing and then like, I made like the eyes, uh, the cheeks, the nose, that kind of stuff like pop a little bit more. So like your eyes going to be drawn to it. Um, you know, yeah, of, yeah, and you, and you have to take into consideration too the the temperature of lights and the intensity of the source, because mm -hmm. like I said earlier, take a flashlight out in a, in a warm sunny day and shine it on the concrete, you're not gonna see it because it's right. powered by the the amount of the amount of radiation coming off the sun. Mm -hmm. So you know, headlights during the day, they're not gonna you might see them illuminated slightly, but they're not gonna cast any light on anything. Yeah, it's yeah the interaction of light, um, light and shadows. It's it's mm -hmm. something. That's why I said study photos. Um, any anyone who's really kind of uh, they want to get into it, study photography, photos, um, especially black and whites too. Believe it or not, it's gonna help your colors a lot more because you're gonna know again the contrast. You're gonna know what works, what doesn't, um, and and you're playing with different variations of that. Uh, that's why even a lot trick. of trick. There's another trick too in like if you're working in Photoshop and you have your color rendering in progress, mm -hmm. you can put something <clears throat> like 50% gray at the very, very top, a, a layer at the very, very top, set it to color mode so it will mm -hmm. blend through everything, turn it on and see what happens to all the rendering you have on your page. If it flattens, you need to increase your contrast. You right. can see immediately and it, and it works in you know 50% K and set it to color mode. To the blend mode for the layer and then look at what it does to the to your rendering yeah so that's a, that's a great tip yeah uh for sure man yeah because yeah you want to avoid those those muddy colors you want you want to make sure that there's plenty of separation plenty of nice stuff going on uh this one again it's kind of nighttime i think you could see it from the light source that's coming on here it's it's a big bright kind of light so but it's not sunlight um i want a little bit more like you know 
well, again, like the, the siding uh, on the house and the paint that's on it, it's cracking and everything. If it's going to be like a moonlight, you're going to have a lot of like kind of subtle uh, shades of blue and white that are kind of going to be everywhere. But since, again, this was a cover, I had to make it pop a little bit extra. So I went a little bit stronger than I normally would uh, with the light mm -hmm. source. But I, I was going to say, it kind of the light source kind of looks like it's a uh, like it's a porch light above that storm cellar. Kinda like, um, but again, uh, when I when I first done this, like last minute, I bumped up the the, the lighting a lot um, mm -hmm. because I again it had to be a cover. So that that's where I usually I bend I bend the the rules a little bit of my own rules that I make. Um, <laughs> the rules I made for this discussion right now. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I, I'm well the way that I work. No, I got you. I got you. That's a better way of saying it. Because yeah, I don't. Again, I told you, I don't follow anyone's specific rules. I, I experiment and I do things on my own. I've always done it that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So like, it, it was a bitch learning how to how to paint and doing things on my own. Uh, I I did listen to some people and some of their techniques and uh, some tips, but uh, ultimately, I just kind of I took either what I wanted or ignored them completely and just did my own thing. Um, this one I played a lot of uh, with a lot of uh, textures as well, um, rim lighting. It's just something I, I like to do. That I don't know. It kind of I think it works with my style and what I've been yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, so he clearly has these like a window beside him or something that's got a very strong light. But again, this has got to be a gritty or darker piece. So right. um, I play played with those kind of things. But yeah, you, you get the gist of it. This one again, mm -hmm. daylight. Uh, play with that. Those pictures of trees back there. Excuse me. Those pictures of trees back there. Absolutely not. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Vinny fucking Tartamella. There are no pictures of trees back there. Do you see pictures of trees in there? I don't. <laughs> I see brilliant paintings of trees back there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like I said, I, I typically I stay away from that kind of shit. I mean, there's there's a place for it. And if it is like specific texturing that you want to do uh, and you're making some kind of a brush out of like, I would say your own photos. Uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like when people steal other, other people's stuff in general because photography yeah. is also an art form. So yep. yeah, don't, go, sure. don't go ripping that off. I'm, uh, I'm with Finney on that. If you need to get some fire textures, just go and set a fire. Exactly. Why not? <laughs> yeah. there's, there's plenty of horrible books you could burn. Uh, Marvel, DC, mm. uh, Image. You know? hey. so, this yeah. is a very complicated set of light sources. And I quite like this a lot. Thanks, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's moonlight. We have the light sources from her and her, her crazy wings. Plenty of shine. But again, you're thinking about metal. You're thinking about texture. You're thinking about the clothing, all that kind of stuff. So it's how to represent that um, in, in the most, uh, I guess, realistic way. But again, I still... I lean towards comic book. My, my style has a lot of realism in it, but I still have um, either comic book or cartoon kind of approaches to certain elements. So I try to bring a balance of, of the two. Yeah, yeah. You got the warm and the cool. She's a light source. The moon's a light source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's great. For sure. And then again, how like the, how it's all happening. We have plenty of shadowing from the hat, from natural nighttime, uh, but the light is hitting him. Then you think about the planes of the face, how it's hitting all over, you know, the cheeks, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, shit. Even take a flashlight on, your, on yourself, put put on a grin, you know, see how light is hitting things. Uh, yeah. If you have a, uh, a toy that's, you know, super realistic or a statue or something, shine some light on it. Uh, see how it's going to affect it. Um, you know, at least you get the idea of it. Because again, if you're if you're doing it uh, from something that's like a statue or a figure, as opposed to something that's uh, real blood and flesh, um, you're going to have slightly different things that are going to happen. Uh, like ears are a little more translucent, and you'll see more reds in them if like there's a light source hitting from behind them. Or you know, there's things you have. The to technical think term about. for that is subsurface scattering. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> On I got I got to bring Scotsman around. Everywhere I go. And <laughs> on that, we were talking about figure drawing last last week, and I was saying there's some really fucking good resources out there for purchasing reference, uh, fairly cheap as well. Purchasing reference reference photographs for learning to figure draw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there's many reference places out there that actually do um, packages specifically at looking at lighting the human body as well. 
yeah, that's, that's definitely a good thing, man. Hell yeah. Anything that helps, uh, something like this. Uh, this was going to be a cover to a project that just didn't happen. Uh, if you guys remember that show, uh, Rescue Me. With yeah, Dennis with Dennis Leary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, uh, I had about five days to do this one. So yeah, I painted this one all up like that. Uh, I, I didn't go as detailed as I normally do with the background. I kind of played with textures and my own shit that I did because the focus was was on them. In fact, I was going to blur out the background a little bit more, but um, so it's, it was just about nailing the portraits. Um, yeah. And again, like the light source is going is kind of off screen at least for him, and it's shining like at him. So you so got some red lights from the from the fire trucks coming in there. You got a little bit of that dirty ambient glow from the, how fucked up 9-11, I guess, was. You know, yep. maybe a big fire. Mm -hmm. okay. For yeah. sure. The amber but, color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, because he's like the main focus, um, it is like, a, you know, the light source is like at us towards him. Yeah. So that that kind of that kind of deal. But I, I think it worked pretty well for, for what this was. So you got to think about... Um, what you're trying to do, the story you're trying to tell. Uh, this is it for the band Dorothy. Um, again, she's on stage, so you're gonna have all the crazy lights from from the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the uh, warm the cools. So definitely, she's on stage with all those lights. It's not gonna be pure black. So I definitely got to uh, like I had to work on, you know, what I was gonna be doing for the actual uh, skin tones. And, and how it was going to work, you know, the way that the light's coming down on her face like that, um, the reflective light uh, off, off the jacket uh, and the furs. So that explains where you're getting, like, a lot of the other colors from. And a lot of times, like, I would even select, uh, like, the colors, like, from her jacket and then play with the lights, like, uh, with the levels of the actual colors. And then I would kind of use them in other parts of the painting. Um, again, there's all different ways of going about it. But usually, like in the end, too, like I'll put on my, uh, I'll do like a special effects kind of layer, or that's what I call it anyway. Mm -hmm. Or I'll, I'll do the screen, uh, put it to black, and then, um, you know, grab my other colors and like kind of do a little bits of glows here and there. Because I think it really pulls it all together, especially with something like this. You definitely want that, um, you know, to get that, yeah. kind of, uh, that cool lighting and, uh, you know, that rocker vibe. Uh, Beatles, this one is kind of simple. And I wanted to have like the burst. This was a cover to a uh, graphic novel. Uh, I think you can still get it on Amazon. Uh, the uh, Rock and Roll Experience, the Beatles, and that's the name of it. Um, but yeah, so this is, it, I think they were like a, re, a reprinting of all the old, uh, the old Beatles comics. Yeah. That's a yeah, shame definitely. there. I thought I was looking down and not up at the screen and you went rock and roll and I was so hoping you were going to say it was a comic book about the rock and roll express. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be, uh, that's something I'd want to read. Oh man. Well, shit. Do it yourself. Why not? Uh, well, Hey, uh, we're at an hour and 42 minutes. I need to, I need to wrap it up. I need to get, yes, some, yes. I need to get, get work in here, but God, what a great discussion. What a great discussion. Light, light is something that is elusive. It's something that there are a lot of rules, but you can break those rules as, as shown by Preston and by, by Vinny here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the thing that I took away from this is that uh, as, long as, as long as you are consistent with your light sources and you think about it, you can do almost anything, almost anything you want. You know, you got to consider direct light sources. You have to consider ambient light sources, meaning... Mm -hmm. Something that's that's emitting light that's right on your subject. Something that's emitting light off in the distance that happens to be bouncing around in the area you're at. Is there a heavenly body above you emitting a light source like a moon or a sun? Are there TVs? Are there windows? Think about all those things. And then just using the knowledge of the forms in the scene, where the light is coming from, draw lines if you have to, to map out where light's going to hit. And then think about it. Can you, can you reasonably say this blue light over here is going to put blue light right here? Well, if nothing's in its way, maybe, maybe it could take a look, see if it does, see if it feels right. That's so, right. Yeah. Well, I want to thank our excellent panel for being here today. Um, you guys are great. And some of us said some of the ones we lost um, because they had to go take care of some stuff as in uh, Preston and Carla. Appreciate you guys as well. 
Um, so before we get out, uh, I'd like to, you know, take a moment and let everybody promote something that they that they're working on a project as always. So, uh, Captain, fuck it. Uh, I'm gonna uh, give my uh, moment of promo to uh, Mr. Commy Mark. Uh, mm. Next Friday, ladies and gentlemen, it is the burn the comic book stream. <laughs> the burning, the pyre, the commie pyre. Mm -hmm. How many does he have that he's gonna do? I don't. I, I don't know. I've not. Uh, he's, he's he's got he's got the numbers that were bought. I know that. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not so a fate on the numbers. I haven't looked at the campaign for a while. I've been too busy doing other stuff. Um, but yeah, next Friday it's it's going to be a long one. I think he's uh, he's planning on going for a little while. Um, I think nine hours was his last estimate. He was hoping to do a twenty four hour, a twelve to twenty four hour stream. Uh, but I think nine hours is what he's planning on doing. Wow! Holy shit! Wow. Mark. He's a more okay. Than he's going to stream until he passes out or something. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to see a communist burn a bunch of books about communism, <laughs> tune into Commie Mark's channel on Friday. Okay. There you go. Oh yeah. Great stuff. Um, Michael Beacon. All right. So Seven Legions still available. Ships out on demand. It's the story of a. Uh, of an angel who served a galactic peacekeeping force, but before he could, uh, uh, and he uncovered a plot to destroy them from within, but before he could warn the others, he vanished, leaving only his memories behind in the mind of Hiko, an orphan born in feudal Japan who becomes a samurai. Mm. You now must choose between fighting the war to the threads of the clan that took him in, or fighting the war to save the galaxy itself. It's a, it's going to be an epic book. You get it as soon, I'll ship it as soon as you order it. And and from everybody I've heard that's received it, they've given it great reviews. They love the story. Oh the, yeah, the the concept and the art is uh, is is really fun. So yeah. uh, check it out. Check it yeah. out. And also, uh, back tales from the Matverse, we're at eighty eight percent. Hell nice. yeah, I'm Simon. Hail Sam. Hail Sam. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Excellent. Um, Lucius, anything you want to promote? Uh, mainly just my own Twitter handle there, Jaw Smashers. Uh, I am shooting for that Graveyard Shift fan art contest. Uh, and if you guys aren't aware, you should guys look at the details of it. There's money prizes for uh, the top three, I believe. Um, so take your shot. Take your chance. Uh, as far as projects, um, you know, I got Merry Boys, and I was actually really impressed with that that book. I am um, jump. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So can't push it hard enough. I think it's one of those ones that – it's uh, it's gotten attention, but I don't think it's got the attention it deserves. Uh, yeah, it, it's a great it book. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I up, man. yeah, yeah. art is great. And uh, happy birthday, Vinny! Thanks, Thanks. man. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Happy birthday! Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vinny, happy birthday! Thank you, brother. Oh wait, You're here's one. Right? Yeah, twenty-one. Uh, here, here's <laughs> one that uh. Uh, you wanted you wanted to see like straight inks uh, and more of I guess a closer mm. traditional style. This was definitely the one. So this this was uh, yeah this was all inked up and then my coloring that I did on it was as close to I guess comic book style as uh, I guess I could get. So I think it's it's kind of clear to see. Fucking brilliant, dude! Thanks, brother. Well, I like it a yeah. lot. So on top of it too, like with the regular line work and then the texture, I think like this one like really popped, you know, kind of what I was going for with the body and the face and all that. I like your your figure. Uh, the perimeter border has some weight to it. So many people draw dead lines on their perimeter borders, and they'll they'll like mm -hmm. add some undershadow, a little bit of thickness here and there. But yeah, you know, I like a meaty meaty character border. That's that's nice. Yeah, definitely. It depends on who, what you're working on too, right? So if if it's going to be a monster, I think they, they should have more bold lines as opposed to, yeah. you know, if it's just like a, a female or something, it should be a little more delicate. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's definitely something to, to mess around with. Uh, nice. Work. So what about uh, any projects that uh, you have um, going still or in demand that you want to... Yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, we're pretty damn close, I think, to uh, to hitting another little milestone there. Um, we're probably like a backer away, I think, from uh, thirty eight thousand on through the woods, uh, the hardcover book. It's a hundred pages, completed story. Uh, if you want a, a great ghost story, that uh, it's pretty much like the work you've been seeing today from me, but on every single page, um, 
in a sequential format, yeah, I, I think you, uh, it's a feast for the eyes for sure. Uh, I play with a lot of different things on that. Uh, light sources, uh, sepia tones. I even have some black and white pages. Um, when, it went, when I go into the past, like I tried two different techniques uh, while I was telling the story. I think both complement each other very well with how we did the pacing of the story. Because again, for me, that's what it is. It's the coloring should work with the um, with the storytelling. Everything should work hand in hand, from the script to the artwork. Um, you want it all to blend. Uh, shit, even the lettering. There's moments in the book too where um, if there is like a colder kind of feel, or there's in uh, there's a room that gets very fucking cold in the book. Um, I had like some of the uh, some of the lettering we we put uh, like in blue instead of your traditional black lines to show like you know even more. You want everything to complement itself. So um, I'm getting too descriptive again. I think no, no, that's all valuable information. So yeah, so check that out. Check out through the woods. Uh, most people have been getting it. They're saying it's like a masterpiece. Definitely like on their top five, if not their number one book that they've picked up this year, which is a huge fucking compliment. Uh, I mean, I, I can't say it enough. Thank you guys. Uh, In the midst yeah. of all the talent within Comicsgate, that is a massive compliment. Dude, absolutely. Like I said, I'm speechless. E every time um, people have been receiving their books and and they're kind of just going on about it, either they're writing me private messages, leaving comments on the actual campaign or on Twitter. Uh, that's why I, I share as, as much as I do as soon as people get them because uh, that's my thank you as well. Um, City of Venus is still available. Uh, City of Venus is better. Thanks, man. That, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, that, that's, my, uh, that's my kind of post-apocalyptic uh, future science action. Right. Super, I got everything in there. And it's going to keep getting bigger, that book. So, Get to the um, end of that book and you just want to punch Vinny in the face because it's ended. <laughs> Nob! The, cl the cliffhanger, yeah. Yeah. I know because it, through the woods, everyone goes, "Yeah, we love through the woods." Some people love it more because it's a completed story. The other ones are are more open because I'm going to be telling more. Because uh, as soon as my current work is done on the pirate book, I'm going to get back to work on City of Venus too. So that yeah. is going to be right after the pirate book is fulfilled. Um, I'm I'm diving into that one. And so uh, you, you you're wrapping the page count as well, aren't you? Yes, it's going to every, all my books from here on out are going to be at least fifty pages. So I, I want to give everyone that special format. Um, definitely a reason to be happy when they get these books because um, anyone who's gotten them, the quality, they've seen it, they've repeated it. Uh, I, I, I do the best possible, the printing, you name it. I want everything to fucking shine because everyone deserves that. No more of this cheap shit that Marvel and DC have been doing or uh, people who cut deals with Walmart with their cheap paper. Nope. Mm -hmm. We got to do... The highest fucking quality for people because people are worth it. Um, oh, and uh, yes, the children's mm -hmm. book, there's about five copies left. That's on the City of Venus campaign. So if you want to get it, get it quick because when they're gone, they're gone for good. I'm not reprinting those. Nice. So, yeah. Well, I'd like to promote a little book uh, you might have heard about called Xenotype. Hell a beautiful, yeah. A beautiful manga um, that I'm coloring, uh, drawn by Odysseus and written by Liam Gray. So it's on Indiegogo right now. Uh, it is in demand. I am uh, coloring it. Captain Fuckhead is flatting it, and uh, you know we're 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 charging through. We were we're nearing completion, nearing completion. Fuck you, so <laughs> so uh, I'd appreciate it if you check that out. Also, I'm um, putting a link in the chat. I did a a video on uh, Red Rooster. Red Rooster Book Two, right here. Received this via Walmart.com. This book arrived in horrific condition, and uh, if you'd like to see me uh, beat the tar out of uh, Mitch Breitweiser metaphorically with words in uh, about 15 minutes of time, check out that video. Share it around because people in Comicsgate need to know that uh, there's we've, we're getting rid of these people. These fucking disingenuous assholes who use us for backing and then run away whenever it, whenever they get out into the mainstream or they do something that's mildly successful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fuck these guys. Seriously, everyone exactly. needs to know. Share that video around. Hopefully Mitch will get to see it because I talked to him directly in it a little bit. Kind of, you know, give him a little 
little speed bag on his balls. Yep. So, you know, everybody Excellent. who's watched it that's given me feedback said that they, they agree. So that's good. Absolutely. And if you saw the birthday stream on Carla's channel uh, last night, White Cat Comics, uh, I went off a bit too on that. I had a couple of really good rants. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know if they got it back up because I know their video got pulled as well. It uh, did. Yeah. They, I think they said it was that the bunny fight video that they showed. Oh. Uh, like I think it was that 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 did it. Lame. Um, yeah, it is lame. But I it might be back up. I don't know if they edited it out and put it back. But yeah. Um, yeah um, I am not a fan of people who who do that. That is cold-hearted bullshit right there. You don't turn your back on people. You don't fuck them over. You don't take their money. And instead of giving them their, their book that they paid for, you, you go ahead and you make a brand new company with that money. That's horse shit. Right. That's horse shit. And that uh, strangers and people are getting it in Walmart before the backers get it because they split it up like that. It's, Again, it's literally it's dirty. Yeah. It's it's fucking dirty. So if he's sitting scratching his head, why are people upset? Why are they upset at us? I don't know. You tell us. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Well, I, I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. Um, our, our great panel members and uh, all everybody in the chat appreciate you. We're gonna be back next week, next Sunday. Have a new topic. I'll probably put that out. I'm, I've got one or two ideas. I'll put that out uh, on Twitter. What, what it's gonna be, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all then. See you later. Later. Have a great day, everybody. Later.